Welcome home, children of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us take a moment of silence in gratitude to God. All those able, please rise for our litany for the baptism of the Lord. O Christ, by your epiphany, your light shines upon us, revealing the fullness of God's love. Help us to live in your light. O Christ of glory, you humbled yourself to be baptized showing us the way of humility. Help us to live with humility. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, by your baptism, you reveal the closeness of the Creator when the voice from heaven proclaimed, This is my beloved Son. Help us to worship you with our whole heart and mind. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep us faithful in Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning and a special welcome to all of you and especially to our visitors. Today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It is an annual liturgical observance which follows on the heels of Epiphany, which was last week. So today the entire liturgy is crafted around the Baptism of the Lord. 
I call your attention to all of the announcements on the goldenrod, which is the insert. Note that next week, I know many of you have been waiting to wear your kilts. Next week is Kirkin of the Tartans. The St. Andrew Society is raring and ready to go. We will have all the tartans here, and I will be in my kilt, and I hope that you will be in your kilt as well. 11 a.m. here at the church. Also note, on um, this coming Wednesday, the 16th, we have a special choral performance. Please take a peek at that. You don't want to miss that if you're able to attend. Also note, on the back side of the insert, we still have some dates available for flowers in the sanctuary in honor or in memory of someone. And finally, please note that there was an additional insert with the 2019 Winter Feast program. At this time, I'd invite Ms. Ann Reed Bros, our Director of Children's Ministry and Young Adult Ministry, to come forward for a moment with the children. All the children are invited forward. Okay, good morning. I am always thrilled to see children in our midst in worship. If y'all would come up here, we have something special to talk about today. Okay, in just a little bit in our worship service, everybody, boys and girls, something exciting is gonna happen. One of our precious church families, the Haley family, is going to have their precious baby Charlotte be baptized. So I want you to stand up and walk over here with me and we're gonna take a peek at baby Charlotte. And her parents told me this was okay, I promise. So come on over, James, we're gonna look at baby Charlotte. This is baby Charlotte. And when baby Charlotte is baptized in just a little bit, Pastor Hunter is going to hold her. And Pastor Hunter is going to look at each one of you and each one of you adults, and he's going to ask us an important question. He's going to ask us, look at me, he's going to say, do you promise to love and take care of Charlotte? And do you promise to teach her about God and Jesus? And your answer is going to be, we do. Now, I don't want it to be like a half-hearted, eh, we do. We're going to say, we do. So let's practice. On the count of three, I want you to say, we do. Are you ready? One, two, three. Uh, that was not very good, I have to be honest. Let's try again. Okay, on the count of three, it's okay to be loud in church sometimes, okay, when you have permission. Okay, so let's try again. One, two, three. We do. Thank you. We do. We promise it's not just her mommy and daddy's job. It's all of our job as her church family and her community of faith to help raise her in the church, to love her and take care of her. So Charlotte, we can't wait. All right, let's say a prayer. Gracious and holy God, we thank you today for the gift of baptism. We thank you for the, your voice who looked down at Jesus Christ and said, you are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. We thank you that you call each and every one of us your beloved child. And all of God's children say, amen. You can take a worship bag back to your seat if you want to, everybody. Beloved, it is now time to, as Amory mentioned, connect our hearts together, being the beloved family of God. Let us join hearts in our prayer for illumination. Open the eyes of our hearts, O oh God. Open the eyes of our hearts. As we turn to your word, your word throughout the beginning of time, help us to hear the whispers which call us beloved. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Today's first lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord, He created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Siva in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight. 
and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you and nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give, up, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created with my glory, whom I formed and made. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, as Anne Reed mentioned, our gospel lesson is a very familiar one. Today we will study Luke chapter 3, verses 15 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them, saying, I baptize you with water. But one, one who is more powerful than I, is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all of the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Beloved, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. On any given day, there are many voices going on in my head. On one extreme, voices I would label low self-esteem. I can't do this. I'm not worthy. I'm not enough. I'm disgusting. And on the other extreme, Grandiosity. I've got this. I can do it all. I'm Wonder Woman. I'm riding around in a glass airplane. I've got to be the best. I've got to be perfect. My hunch is that at one time or another, we've all heard such voices. Voices of shame are loud. Some of us internalized voices we heard as kids. Every time I sit down to craft a sermon, I battle loud voices that tell me I'm not good enough, that I should not be doing this. Who do you think you are? And I don't let these voices stop me. I don't give up. I persevere. I try to listen for a deeper and a truer voice. The voice from heaven. The voice that comes straight from the heart of God. This is the only voice that truly matters. Now often I need God's help 
I need your help. I need prayer and meditation. I need whispers from scripture, whispers from hymns, to hear God speaking straight to my heart. And this I know, that the voice from heaven will never shame or frighten us. The voice from heaven will comfort, strengthen, and empower us. It will remind us of who and whose we truly are. The voice from heaven is the same voice from heaven that Jesus, John, and the whole crowd heard. You are my son, my beloved. You are my child. With you, I am well pleased. On this baptism of our Lord Sunday, all of our liturgy, every word, and every hymn, and every prayer, and every holy sacrament, every offering, points to themes of identity and themes of belonging. We are claimed by God, we are forgiven, we are washed, we are cleansed, and we are reborn, reborn in the waters of baptism. The Heidelberg Catechism begins with question number one. What is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer, that I belong in body and in soul, in life and in death, not to myself, but to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. This comes straight from Paul's teachings to the early church in Rome. Absolutely nothing, nothing, not even death can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. From the womb to the tomb and for all eternity, we are God's beloved children and we were made from the heart of God. In baptism, we are incorporated into Christ's body, the church. St. Paul describes it to the churches of Corinth and Galatia like this. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. So there is no Jew or Greek, no slave nor free, no male or female, nor circumcised or uncircumcised. We were all made one to drink of the one spirit. Belonging to God, belonging to a particular church, is a spirit-filled life. A life where we learn this truth that we are not alone anymore. We are all one big family. Generation after generation after generation. Ambrose, St. Ambrose, baptized our own St. Augustine at dawn on Easter in the year 387, a long time ago. Ambrose taught that the newly baptized emerged from the waters of baptism like Christ came out of the tomb, like a resurrection. We become new creatures in our baptisms. We take off the old self, we take off sin, and we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We put Christ on as Lindsay and Chris put on beautiful white garments for baby Charlotte. I have loved the painting of St. Augustine that hangs right over there for as long as I can remember. And this morning at 5 a.m., I realized why I love the painting so much. The painting speaks truth to my heart. 
Augustine is looking up, up, up. And Augustine is looking up because he knows that only God validates him. Only God fills the hole in his soul. He's looking up to God because God's voice is the only voice that truly matters. God's law, God's approval is what he craved. The original hearers of our gospel lesson that tells us about Jesus' baptism would have made immediate connections to the creation of the world in Genesis, to Noah and Moses parting the Red Sea. Think about it. Water, the heavens opening, the movement in a bodily form like a dove, and the sound of a voice, a voice. Jesus inaugurates the new creation, the one who is being baptized along with everyone else on the banks of the Jordan River, is in fact the architect of the universe, the glue that holds the entire cosmos together, the redeemer of the whole world, Jesus. Of Nazareth, Jesus is a new Noah, bringing a covenant of grace and forgiveness under the sign of the rainbow. Jesus is a new Moses, breaking chains of oppression, silencing loud voices of shame, liberating all people. Jesus' identity is made clear to all. The only voice that truly matters came from heaven and declared once and declared for all eternity the truth. You are my son, my beloved. I am proud of you. These beautiful, beautiful words also reveal to us God's identity, God's attributes. For who is God? A God of love, a God of compassion and tenderness, a God of blessings. Lots of blessings, like rain coming down from heaven, blessings. Tender, familial love, like a good papa or a good daddy. God loved Jesus, and God was proud of him. In the same way, God loves you. God is proud of you. God is pleased with you. God delights in you. Each one of you, each one of us, is precious to God and cherished. In just a few minutes, Little baby Charlotte will be baptized. Hunter will speak these words to her, which are words that also speak to the child in each one of us. For you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, he did battle and he suffered. For you, he went through the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, he cried, it is fulfilled. For you, 
He triumphed over death. My dear friends, my family, may you hear today the voice of God, the whisper from heaven. You are my beloved. I am well pleased. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and and justice. On behalf of the session, I present Charlotte Audrey Haley 
daughter of Lindsay and Chris Haley, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Lindsay and Chris, do you desire that Charlotte be baptized, do you? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your daughter, do you? Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise when able to guide and nurture Charlotte by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church, do you? We do. Through baptism, we enter the covenant that God has established. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. Lindsay and Chris, in presenting your daughter for baptism, I ask you, therefore, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and in his love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? Jennifer and Ben, as godparents, do you promise to be faithful, godparents? Do you promise to love Charlotte, praying for her and setting a good example, do you? With the whole church, let us now stand and confess our faith. Please stand as you're able. Using words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and I preach Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. It was through the parting of the Red Sea that you brought the people of Israel out of bondage from Egypt and into the Promised Land. It was through baptism that your son Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit to lead us through death to resurrection and from the bondage of sin into eternal life. We thank you, loving God, for the holy mystery of baptism. We thank you for this child of the covenant, Charlotte Audrey, and we ask that your Holy Spirit come upon her and guide her throughout her entire life and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. For you, Charlotte Audrey, Jesus Christ came into the world. He did battle. He suffered. For you, he went through the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, he cried, it is fulfilled. For you, 
he triumphed over death for little tiny you. Charlotte Audrey, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I know you have been marked as Christ's own forever. This is your family. I want you to see them. You are so precious. Beloved, Charlotte has been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church through her baptism. God has made her a member of the household of God, our family to share with us in Christian community. Beloved, what are your words of welcome to baby Charlotte? With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you into Christ's church to share with us in his ministry. For we are all offering our gifts to Christ. Amen. 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 Chris and Lindsay, on behalf of our church family, I'd like to present Charlotte with a couple of baptismal gifts. One is a children's Bible for Charlotte that we hope you'll read to her throughout the years. And the other is a children's book on baptism that helps to explain to a child about the meaning of baptism. Today is a big day in the life of the church, a baptism, and also an ordination and installation. At this time, I'd like to invite Grace English, please, to come forward. We are all called into the Church of Jesus Christ in our baptism and marked as Christ's own in the Holy Spirit. This is our common discipleship, our common calling, to be disciples and servants of our Lord. Within the community of the Church, some members are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, as ministers of word and sacrament, as trustees. Ordination is Christ's gift to the Church, assuring us that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of care and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of Memorial Presbyterian Church now ordains and installs Grace English to the session. As many of you know, we try as often as possible to have one member of the session who is in high school. Grace is a senior this year, and I am delighted that God has called you to this position. I ask you now to answer the constitutional questions asked of all elders and deacons and also trustees. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior? Acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique 
and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ and the church universal and God's word to you, do you? Do you seriously receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? And finally, will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your own ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Do we, the members of the church, accept grace as chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. Do we agree to encourage her, to respect her decisions, and to follow as she guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? If so, say, we do. We do. We do. Please join me in our prayer of ordination and laying on of hands. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious and eternal God. Currently serving elders and deacons to come forward as Grace kneels so we might lay hands on her. We are one family. Let us squeeze in and continue our prayer. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise, for throughout the ages of every time and place you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to self-salvation, to point the way to salvation. We thank you for men and women in every age who have nourished your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon grace, who has taken up the mantle of leadership in your beloved church. Grant her the same mind that was in Jesus Christ. Give her a spirit of truthfulness that she may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of her daily living to rightly govern your people. Give her the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and in the work of ministry, Give grace, gladness, and give her strength, discipline, and hope, humility, humor, courage, and an abiding sense of your holy presence. Amen. Amen. Please stand, Grace.
Grace, you are now an elder in the church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Lord. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please stand as you are able and share the peace. Let us now go to God with our prayers of the people. Let us pray. O oh God, you do indeed claim us as your daughters and sons, and we give you thanks for the gift of baptism and ordination. We ask, O oh Lord, that you hear us now and as we pray, for we do not know how to pray as we ought but it is by the grace and providence of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that you hear us. We pray now in silence for your world. O oh Lord, we ask that you move within our country, drawing us together, making us one people, healing divisions. We now pray for our nation and for our elected leaders. We pray today, O oh God, for those serving in the armed forces, both here and abroad, and for their families. Hear us as we pray silently for them. Gracious God, we offer to you all the hurts that we know of, all the pain that we might speak. We pray today for those close to our hearts that are grieving, depressed, anxious, scared, and recovering from surgery or illness. We offer all of these prayers to you on the wings of faith, trusting in your grace and your love. And now we pray the prayer that Christ taught, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, it is indeed more blessed to give than it is to receive. Will the ushers at this time please come forward? Down to the water to pray. When I went down. 
Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And together, O oh God, we thank, we thank you for the beauty of baptism and for the truth of its symbolism. We thank you for keeping us close to you. Receive these gifts, we pray, and may they be used by you to further your will of love, peace, and joy.
beloved daughters and sons, I charge you to go into the world carrying whispers of that truth. You are the beloved, and God is proud of you. Love the Lord with all of your hearts, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and go loving your neighbor as you love also yourselves. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the steadfast, strong love of God and the fellowship and the friendship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in each one of us this day and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen.